Welcome back, my fellow demigods, to Oxygen Not Included. So, I've been in this research cycle here for, oh, longer than I care to admit. So, I'm going to come up with another project here that we're going to be doing alongside of all of this, well, research. So, what should we do? Well, we have all of this nuclear waste down here. <laughs> A fair amount of it. It just keeps building up. So, I should make use of it. And where? Well, what is an obvious thing to do with a bunch of nuclear waste? Well, I think the obvious thing to do with all of that is to cool a volcano. Clearly. So that's what I'm going to do today. What could possibly go wrong? All right, so right down here I have multiple geysers. So I've got an iron volcano right on over here. We can also see that I have a natural gas geyser. Mmm, very nice. So that can provide me with a source of power, uh, at least when it's actually running. Might be able to store up the extra gas and use that. But hey, guess what? I have another natural gas geyser over here. So clearly that's probably something I should tap into. And I don't remember what's right here. Ah, a cool slush geyser, of course. I'll take one of those as well. So one of my goal, so my goal here today is to really combine these together and then power them up. Ooh, ooh, look at this. Hey, we even have a, a cool steam vent up here because why, why not? Now, the reason that this is going to possibly work when it comes to something like an iron volcano, right? When we look at this nuclear waste, we can see that it turns into nuclear fallout gas, 526 degrees Celsius, and then it solidifies at 26. So it's got this nice range, and it also has a really good specific heat capacity. So we should be able to absorb a lot of heat that comes out of that. And if it goes into a gas form, it's not going to hurt us because it goes right back into a nuclear waste at 60... 7 degrees Celsius. Wow. We lose a ton of the specific heat capacity when it goes to a gas. Whoa. Hold up. Hold up. Hmm. So flash it to a gas. Cool the gas down to a liquid. Magically delete a bunch of energy? Sounds about right to me. All right. So, to make this work, well, we're going to have to do a number of things. First and foremost, we have to dig this area up. Uh, and then the next thing is we actually have to bring that nuclear waste all the way down here. So, um, that's going to be a long pipe, or I'm just going to bottle it up and try to move it. However, bottling it up and trying to move it is, is quite dangerous. So, maybe I'll get a pipe at... And maybe we can go over here. Should probably be insulated. Otherwise, I think I'll get... End up with a, an entirely crispy base. Who made a mess? Oh, meep. I see. Sorry, bud. I've been locking you up here with just some food. <laughs> Grapefruit preserve. Just trying to run this thing nonstop. Hey, man. You're almost halfway there. You've only been up here for an hour. I mean, this seems like a great idea. Let's just... Yeah, let's take this nuclear waste pipeline. Bring it right down here in my base. Let's go right next to the fish. You know, make sure those are well irradiated. Yeah, that is a sufficiently large pipeline I'm trying to build here. At least I have 18 dupes now, so it should go fairly quick. Boop. 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 <gasps> we have completed the material science. Finally, that was only 370 research. Just be thankful you weren't here for all of that. It was... It was <laughs> this is a big step up from 30 or whatever it is, 40 up to 370. And look at this last one over here. 400. Oof. Let's go ahead and get the diamond press up. Meep. You can finally come back to land. There you go. Boop. As far as some other things that I'm working on up here, I am working on the second rocket platform. I think I might build it here. Maybe I should build them all at the same height just so that they look right. Rather than them looking completely random. Anyhow. Maybe. Wow, that was weird. However, what I've got going on over here is a rocket platform. Mm, this bad boy is made out of tungsten. So it has a very high melting uh, temperature. And inside of here, I'm going to have some liquid pipes that are running right next to radiant, mm, sorry, bunker doors. So those doors, uh, they all change temperature at the exact same time, the whole door. So a little different than tiles. Anyhow, the idea is that as the rocket plume comes out of here, it will condense down the uh, nuclear waste. However, more on that later. Whoa, who's getting hurt here? Is it temperature? It is a little warm in here. Ooh, 76 degrees Celsius. Yeah, that's a little toasty in there. All right, so this cooling loop is running here. However, it's not 
taking enough heat out of this area. I need to cool that down a little bit more. So let me go ahead and jump on over here to the radiant pipes. We'll pick up some gold and just absorb some heat out of there. I'm going to go ahead and uncover this cool slush geyser. This thing could be really, really useful for just kind of building up a lot of really cold, polluted water, which I could use to, well, cool the iron volcano and all that. Actually, we may not even need the nuclear waste, depending on how much I get out of it. Plus, when I, if I were to mix it with something like the cool steam vent here, then I could possibly kind of cool all of this together. I'm not too worried about mixed liquids or something like that. I can always uh, just run those through this right here, the water sieve, the polluted would be cleaned and moved on. What I'm thinking about doing here is just using this area as a giant polluted water tank, or maybe just using this down here because I'm already started. <laughs> but um, yeah, interesting that it's already down there near the bottom. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, well, you know what? I have a copper volcano right here. I can go ahead and use the nuclear cooling tactic on this one. That'll be interesting, because I'm not sure that it really makes sense to do what I was talking about all the way over here. So, uh, plan B, we're going to go ahead and just move the nuclear waste this direction instead. I mean, I might still use it over there, but things look a little bit different. There. We'll just bring it on over here, and we'll work on the copper volcano. Yes, look at all of these dupes at work down here. Hmm. Alright, so what I think I want to see here is some sort of copper volcano that, it, uh, when it goes to run, it, it's actually going to take the nuclear waste and turn it into a gas, which I think is kind of important because we might be able to get it to a gas, cool it back down, and actually get rid of the energy that way. So what I'm going to do is not cool the liquid down here as much, but rather try to cool the gas. Just the gas. This is completely experimental, so I don't know if it'll work, but we're about to find out. All right. We'll put down an aqua tuner right on over here. Do the normal loop thing where we come on in and then we go down and over. And then that just runs right on over there. Very small loop. Nice. Right above it, that's where we're going to put our steam turbine. This will take care of the heat. Actually, you know what I will do this time with this loop is I'm actually going to go, go up here and cool down the steam turbine as well. I think I'll have more than enough grunt uh, or... I think I'll have more than enough heat capacity with the liquid that's in this loop to not have any issues. So that'll be kind of neat. Be able to do two things with the same. Oh, and if I wanted to get real fancy with it, increase the capacity of this loop, I could put a little bit of a liquid reservoir right down here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. I think that's a smart idea. Let's take a look at the power situation here. How do I want to run this? This is 1200. Laird, how you doing? Uh, you're still up here. Are you still doing research? Or no, you're just staring at the machine. Lerda, number three, number four. What else do you have to do? What? Get to work, Lerda. I think Lerda's broken. What? How are you here, but not... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't, no, not sure what's going on there, but um, I think it'll be just fine. Don't worry about it. It'll be okay. Come on, you know you want to run this thing. Don't make me bring meat back. All right. All right, so I want to put in an auto sweeper over here. I'm a little worried about it getting too hot. So how am I going to keep it from getting too hot? First off, I'm going to make it out of steel. If I build it right here. Yeah, let's just go ahead and get rid of this stuff. And then we come in here with something like a temperature shift plate. That will have a lot of mass. Ooh, slow heating. Highly thermally conductive. What temperature does uranium ore melt at? Hmm. Kind of melts at a low temperature. Not exactly what I want. All right, so I'm going to put a temperature shift plate behind this, and I'm just going to make it out of iron. That seems to have a good, good thermal properties for what I'm trying to do here. Uh, and I'm going to try to keep that nice and cool. So we're going to have gases inside of here. That's not the uranium stuff. So hopefully this stays cool inside of here because we're going to run it through the aqua tuner. And by cool, I mean like, you know, 40 degrees Celsius or so. Maybe that low or 50. <gasps> Learn to know you're out of plastic. Learn, learn, learn it. What are you doing to the nose cone, man? Learn it. What did the rocket ever do to you? All right. 
Time for the next thing. We need a little bit of water down here for the aqua tuner. So let's go ahead and get that built up. I've already got the liquid pipe uh, in so I can bring in and the nuclear waste when we get there. Also got some sort of little loop over here. Might replace this with hydrogen. Gosh, if I could find some hydrogen to get all the way down there. Ah, you know what? I do have some hydrogen nearby. Right here. Aha. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm actually just going to put a bridge on that right here. Boop. I'm not going to worry about cooling this. It's just going to be there for a little while. I'm going to bring that all the way down here. Oops, went too far. And then I'll put a high pressure vent right inside of there. Now, as for the gas that's already inside of here, it'd be ideal if I can get rid of a bunch of it. Same with this over here. So here's what I'll do. I'll put in these gas pipes right here, just for now, to kind of get rid of all of that. And I can try to pull at least a little bit of a vacuum inside of there. Probably won't be able to get all of it out of there. Lerda, you almost done up here? Gosh, 234 of 250. Just a little bit more, Lerda. No! Oh! Come on, you can do it, Lerda. Lerda, no, don't fall asleep again. Just finish it. You can sleep after. Come on, 240. God, gosh, you gotta breathe now? Put some effort into it, Lerda. Where are you even flying to? You're just parked right here. I don't even know why you're in space, but you're here. Thing literally has autopilot. Maybe we could just disable it so you do research a little bit faster. Hey, wake up, Lerda. Come on. You're almost there, Lerda. 48. 49. 50. Yay. All right, you ready for the next one? <laughs> Look, it's only like a little bit. You can get rid of this one just fine. You want to... Before you sleep. Oh, no, now you're making a mess. I mean, you still have plenty of food up here. It's like, but now it doesn't want to give you. Oh, it's because you're at 100% stress. That's why. Once your stress goes down, you're technically throwing a temper tantrum right now, but you don't have any targets. But once your stress goes down, this thing should uh, give you something to do. But yeah, it doesn't seem like dupes that are out in space, at least with the destructive trait, try to destroy anything when they're in space. Interest. You're sleeping again, Lerda. All right, so all of that's coming along nicely. Now I got a little bit of water here, so that's good. That will create steam, which is excellent. That's all I need. We can go ahead and deconstruct that now. We do have these little gas pumps here. These are, they're, they're gonna be destroyed. All right, so here's what I have going on. I have this auto sweeper right here again, and we're gonna try to keep this nice and cool, hopefully. We'll get a little bit of hydrogen here, get the you know, the gases and whatnot. Get the liquids running around. But the idea is that the liquid down here, once this is below a certain temperature, then we'll go ahead and enable the auto sweeper to kind of run, pick up that uh, copper that's coming off of this volcano, and then do something with it. That's the hope. All right, so now what I think I need to do is go ahead and bring in that nuclear waste to this loop. Start to get that up and running. So if I connect this right here, and then we put in a bridge, that should start to bring it in. All right, there we go. Moving a little bit of nuclear waste. There it is. So that's now flowing down at 200 and some degrees Celsius. Uh, people were asking me why was I cooling this down. It's just to protect this liquid pump. All I have is steel. Um, otherwise, I I wouldn't mess around with cooling it at all. But until I get a higher temperature material, that's what I got to do. Anyhow. So that is flowing right down here at 200 degrees. So it's gonna be fairly hot. I'm gonna to have to run around the loop multiple times before it actually cools down. But I do have the lower limit here. So if it's above 45 degrees Celsius, then the nuclear waste should be cooled down. So that will cool it by 14 degrees Celsius. So it's gonna be this number minus 14. And if I look up the waste, you can see that it is 27 degrees. So I could set this as Low is 41 degrees, but I'm giving myself just a little bit of safety there. Ah, there it goes. Yeah, let's go ahead and bring some more in. If I, I already have some steel here, so I can go ahead and put in a steel pump right there and actually run this backwards if I wanted to, which I think I can get to that so I can do it. <laughs> All right, there's a the problem. This steam turbine is currently way too hot because of the liquid I'm running through it. Mmm. We'll see. Let's see how this goes. It's trying to cool down the liquid, but it's coming in incredibly hot. So 
something to be aware of. Things are getting too hot. Oh boy. Oh boy. We need to shut this down just a little bit here so we don't get more in there. And I need to do something fairly quickly here to save this from overheating. So priority level nine, we're gonna bring in some ice. I need this steam turbine to be running so that it actually cools down this down here, which is just getting, oh, the power. Okay, stop. It's 400 degrees Celsius. Oh boy. Yeah, now that the liquid reservoir has gotten too hot, it's gonna be damaged and start dumping out nuclear waste, which is even hotter. Oh boy. Come on, Aaron. Come on, dupes. Come on. Go, dupes. Go. Come on, ice. Oh, there we go. First one's being built. Come on, cool down. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, now let's go ahead and sweep up this nuclear waste. <laughs> it's working. I mean, it might be slightly flooded, but it's working. But look at the temperature now. Nice and cool. <laughs> yeah, things got a little bit too hot there. Just a little bit. It's all right, though. There we go. All right, we go. Just dump that nuclear waste over here. We don't need to worry about that. It's fine. Come on, steam turbine. Stop being flooded. It's never good when your power system is flooded and you're dealing with nuclear waste. Let's see if I can get the current nuclear waste below a certain temperature before I bring more of it in there. Probably can do some sort of automation on this one. All right, so I can do this. I can detect the temperature of the nuclear waste inside of this loop and then turn on and off liquid shut off which will allow me to bring in more waste build up more stuff inside of the reservoir without it getting too hot hopefully except no that now seemingly messed up the the flow of stuff this isn't going well all right so the temperature of this loop now that is running through here is about mm, 44 degrees here because it's picking up a little bit of heat from the steam turbine and trying to cool back down there we go yeah do have a little bit of nuclear waste just kind of mm, laying down there yeah, but don't worry about it we'll just close the door forget about it pretend like it's not there ah bringing in more over here is just it just holy moly it doesn't make that steam turbine hot in an instant God. it just does not want to cooperate there we go now it's cool 87 hmm once again i'm overheating come on there we go, now the temperature's dropping back down. Mmm, didn't look like I was able to save this in time. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go in there and try to fix it. Well, let's make sure I have some steel on hand. Luckily, I should be able to get in there, not, since I have a little bit of naphtha right there. <laughs> so it shouldn't be too bad. All right, so there's just not enough conductivity up here. We got a, like chlorine or something, that gas in the way. And I just can't cool down the steam turbine because it's, you know, just isn't, there's not enough, whatever. There we go. Somehow got a little bit of water in there. Not sure where it came from, but that will do the trick. There we go. Now this is up and running. Good deal. Sweep that up. Rebuild it. Reseal it up. All right, let me get rid of this whole automation. That just didn't work. I added way too much heat way too quickly and things could not handle it. So uh, I can do it, but I just have to go a lot slower. So I could take a liquid valve, possibly do that right here, uh, and then try this number. Just try to run that up into this import right up here. All right, there we go. Reconstructing, rebuilding, fixing. Slightly avoided that disaster, maybe. I think it's time to bring in the hydrogen for the left side. We can go ahead and do that. So if I take this, connect all of that, it should bring in the hydrogen. Uh, another thing I want to do is bring in this nuclear waste over here so that we have a nice puddle of it down below. Not too much though. I don't want to flood the volcano. I just kind of want to have enough down there to where it, when it runs, it turns it into a gas. So I need a liquid vent and that'll be right on over here. I know this is so complicated, but whatever. Let's see if it works. So we'll do that number, we'll bring it up. We'll take this, we'll set this down to 1,000 so it runs slow. All right, there we go. Now we're bringing that in from the left side. Let's go down there and uncover that real quick. We'll dig that up. <laughs> Lerda, there's some nuclear waste coming for you before you end up crispy. No, Lerda, you almost finished. Lerda, next activity, another 19 cycles. Oh, gross. 
Well, let's see if I can add to this loop without overheating it. Hmm, I had to turn it down to 500. This area over here keeps getting hotter, and if it gets over 100 degrees, then this whole thing shuts down and I end up with the exact same problem as I had last time. So I want to make sure that that number can go down. What is with this reservoir? Why does it not want to hold nuclear waste? What is up with that? All right, well, forget it. I'm done trying to fill that thing because it just doesn't want to stay in there. I thought it was damage, but it's not damage. Hmm. All right, let's see if I can get this mixed gas out of here. We got a little bit of chlorine, a little bit of carbon dioxide. If I break out this tile down here, that should push it down and out. I still have another 18 cycles, though, until this runs. So you might just see me skip forward in time until, until that comes around. Otherwise, this would be kind of a weird video without it. Yes, water. And pretty soon, this one will become active in another cycle. Uh, probably may, may not uncover the... You know what? Why not? Here we go. Let's just go for it. <laughs> so this water, I, I'm just reusing the pipe that I was going to use for the nuclear waste. But no, this is just going back up here into my tank. Which actually, I, I need a bit more water so I can get oxygen out of it. As far as this over here, still just kind of hanging out. Not doing anything. Waiting for that to become active. Another 14 and a half cycles. Now there's actually a lot of ice down here. So I'm expecting this to start to melt stuff and just start to fill all of this up. There should be a lot of water down here. Man, Lilu is a fast dupe. Look at this dupe go. Bang. Do some other nice things for my dupes, like put in some plastic tiles, make them run faster. I know, real nice. Oh yes. Oh yes, things are working nicely here. Hey, is this volcano about to go? Or did it already go? Oh, I guess it already went. Hmm. Well, yeah, that's a little bit warm down there. But this is also cold, so... <laughs> we'll see who wins. <laughs> Here's how you play this game. You take the iron that came out of this one, and you just put temperature shift plates right here. <laughs> Alright, so both of these are running at the same time. Ultra hot, ultra cold. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. All right, it's the moment of truth. We're about to find out if this volcano with some nuclear waste and a nuclear waste cooling loop is actually going to work out. Now, I do have this set mm, below, so we might see the first bits actually just get pulled away from the volcano. But let's see what happens here. And just like that, while there is a little bit of heat in there, it's actually being picked up uh, right away. But now it's been disabled because we're too hot. Okay. So that's what I was hoping for it to happen. You see copper there? That's at 300 degrees Celsius, so it's it's hot. What's the temperature like in here? Fairly reasonable, the temperature that's going into the aqua tuner. That liquid looks to be about 80 some degrees. Okay. So yeah, it's hot. It isn't turning this nuclear waste instantly into a gas like I was kind of hoping for. It. There's just a little bit too much mass there. So what this makes me think is that this would probably be a, quite a bit faster if I took this cooling loop and just ran it along the bottom here and just cool down this puddle of nuclear waste because right now we kind of have a gas interaction going on here which I mean is cooling it quickly but it it probably could run a little bit faster and if we get below 60 degrees there we go now we pick up that copper and ship it away boop just like that not bad I wouldn't say it's perfect but yeah that seems like a, a fairly reasonable way to tame a Volcano, something like that. I could probably simplify it quite a bit, but yeah. Nice. So if I wanted to do the exact same thing over here, I could definitely do that and cool down this iron a lot faster. <laughs> Although this right here is just a battle of the, the cool slush geyser versus the iron volcano with the cool steam vent on top here. And you know what? It's actually working out all right. This thing is staying nice and cool. As far as other things that I'm currently building up and working through, Look at this! 
Yes! The Red Bolt engine. Mmm, I built that. And kind of a tiny little nose cone on top of it. And then many little rover modules here. I can outfit this in multiple different ways. But yeah, this is actually up and running now. So I can go ahead and collect some Rad Bolts here. Take that and try to put those inside of the engine there. I don't know if I can go through the platform or not. I might have to go around it. But I can do that if I go right here. Boop. And then right on over. That would work too. As far as the research, I'm actually making a fair amount of progress on that as I'm trying to get to the improved hydrocarbon propulsion. You can see that I'm knocking out all of that research right there. <laughs> I, I locked Meep in, in space for a long time again. Although, the, really, the next thing I really want to get here is that drill cone. Mmm, yes. That'll be nice. Oh, this one's been restocked, so Meep, it's time to get some more research going. Hop on in, buddy. At any rate, that's all I got time for today. Hope you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. <laughs> I think the map is big enough. Jeez. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar, out. Bye-bye, Meep. <laughs>